So we've got, so far, we've got most of our, well, I'd say a little over half of our braces in. I had to go get more lumber. And then we're getting our bracing in so that we can put our walk plank around the inside so that we can pour from that. And my dad is here helping. He's done a bunch of bracing today and we did some leveling. So it's like within a sixteenth of an inch all the way around level. So yeah, we're just You sound real you I'm sound so real tired. you sound real excited. I'm so tired. <laughs> I had to run to the city and get four more sticks of number five rebar because I was short and that's kinda hard to get and they don't normally stock it, so we were super lucky that day. You wanna point out what Say hello. Howdy. <laughs> Those, so that's four. So that's a walk plank there. So we'll work off of that when we're pouring. And then that these right are there. braces. What are you pointing at? I was pointing at your walk plank. Oh, yeah. And there's one up over there. Yep. And so that's what you walk along when you pour? Yep. So cool. we'll just lay a bunch of boards up there so I have something to stand on so you're not up and down a ladder because that's not, you got to be able to move fluid, you know, in a fluid way mm -hmm. around the perimeter. We have to pour this in two foot lifts, so we're going to have to go around this building four times. Oh. Actually, it'll look probably a little over, probably oh, five man. times. So. Oh man, looking good though. Yep. So, I haven't been out here showing everything that they're doing. And Skylar won't record because he's in time crunch and doesn't want to take the time. Completely understand, okay. but... So, that's why there hasn't been much footage on the bracing. I think I have. I need to bring the scraps over. I forgot. That's what I was going to do. All right. So we'll update on what's going on. Uh, we have basically all of our vertical rebar in, except for a couple small spots. And uh, we have our pilliards, which are these little bump outs out, which will help with um, the stability of our long walls so that the pressure of the dirt outside won't push the wall in when we have like dry to wet weather and back and forth it makes the ground heave <clears throat> um then we've got our um, sewer stack stubbed in right there you have to put all your penetrations in the wall before you pour otherwise you're drilling concrete unnecessarily so we've got our utilities and stuff all put, put, punched in uh, and then around the interior you see our bracing in there that helps keep the wall straight and lined while we pour and then we also put our walk plank on it so that we have something to work off of when we're pouring concrete in because I'll be going around the wall with a hose there's going to be a pump truck can you see what I'm showing mm -hmm. you um, running a hose full of concrete down into the wall pumping concrete down in there yeah those are ledger boards we wet set our J bolts into the concrete ahead of time, so that's all ready to go for our deck once we get to that point. And we have those three spots on the outside, and then we have um, ledger boards on the interior wall, the full length of both of the long walls for our floor joists to go to. So this isn't a conventional basement where normally your floor framing would sit on top of this wall and you would go up with wood. Since we're going up with concrete, your floor framing sits on the inside. So we have these ledger boards that the floor joists will run into and then there will be joist hangers on 16 inch centers all through there. <clears throat> so we have our beam pocket formed out in the middle of the short wall on each end for our steel eye beam to sit in. So after this concrete's poured and it's cured for a couple weeks, we'll have them deliver the beam and they'll just come in here with a crane and set it down in the hole. So that'll be pretty cool. It's gonna be cool. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. We just have to finish up all these little details before Thursday. So awesome! Yeah. Yay! Yeah, we're getting there. Getting there. It's getting there. Still stressing me out, but I think we'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how this works? These little what are these? What do you call these? These bump out pilliards. Pilliards. So these pilliards, he cut a hole in the wall of the ICF so that the cement will flow out of there into here. And then we'll be putting footing under here, under them, just like we did the walls. So that's how those work. Am I right? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And where, and where you see all, that's where our marriage joints are. So... A little extra bracing there. 
So, day before the pour, night before the pour, how are you feeling? About like that, about like that much left. That's what we all got left. Uh, this basement has done us in. We're not actually going to build a house, we're just going to build a basement. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> then, we, then we quit. No, no, no. Yes. Oh man. Yep, yep. Got a checklist, knocking it knocking it down as fast as I can. That's uh that's pretty much the gist of it. You're pretty close. Yeah, I mean Yeah. I know. <laughs> pretty rough. Uh, what do you got? This left, and then a whole bunch of bracing, and the... I've done the a lot of the bit? bracing. Oh, that's good. The footing is the main... The footing is the next big job. You have this one and that one over there to do? I have all four of these to do this too. Oh, shoot, kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot, oh, heck of a night, to say the least. Wow. It's going to be a heck of a night. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how late I'm going to stay up, and how early I'm going to get up, because I'd rather work in the daylight. So I might have you, I think, I don't know what time the sun comes up. It's like 5 right now. Mm. It's only easier to work in the daylight than it is at the dark because the bugs get in your eyes if you have enough light to see. Yeah, it's not ideal. It's pretty frustrating when you're working out here after dark. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Oh, man. The problem is right now, I'm not much help because we have a little one. we said this many times on here. Yeah, she ornery. She's not just honoring, she's little and she's this is busy. a massive hole and yeah. it's just, it does not work she's right now. Cute though. So we either need a babysitter so I can help or someone needs to come help you. Can you stop? Anyways, we're all a little exhausted. Yeah, it's getting, it's going to be a bit much. Yep. To say the least. It is now Friday. So the day after Thursday, which is the day we were supposed to pour. Oh, Friday comes after Thursday. And <laughs> have we poured? Have we poured? We no. You know what's really funny? I was just talking to somebody on one ICF pour. Uh huh. And he sent me a video of their pour, and he was like, "Well, we poured yesterday, which was not the day we were planning on pouring, but we actually poured that time." So they had to yeah. reschedule several times. This is normal. I know. For people who don't know what the frick they're doing. Yeah, right. Well, obviously, <laughs> we would much rather uh, make sure everything is as good as we can get it before we pour. I mean, obviously. it's the foundation of our house and stuff, you know, it's not like so. It's a big deal. It's fine. I'll wait a couple extra days to make sure everything is perfect. As perfect as we can get it. Still nervous though. Nervous. Very, very nervous. So the reason we were pushing to pour Thursday and trying to do it is because we're supposed to get a good amount of rain on um, Saturday. So you guys know the history of our basement in rain. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to just make sure that that went as smoothly as possible. But we're just going to trust that God's got this and his timing is better than our timing. Because if we're learning anything... Anything our with this. Sucks. Our timing's horrible. <laughs> so we're just gonna go with it. So I bid online on some items for the house. I it was it's a matte black faucet and it's normally like in the two hundred dollar range. And so last night I bid on it and I won it for thirty dollars. And then we have a French press. Um, which I love the coffee the taste is fabulous but it's kind of a pain in the butt because sometimes with kids and whatnot 
you kind of want to wake up and not have to wait for your water to boil and for the coffee to steep. You know, you just kind of want to push a button or have it already brewed. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I kind of just want a coffee machine for right now. And so there was a coffee machine that's normally a hundred dollars on there for, and I want it for six dollars. Now, later I go to pick up the items and we'll see <laughs> if um, they're good or not. Um, from the pictures, the faucet looked brand new, so I don't think we'll have any issues with that. But there was a couple questionable things on the coffee maker, but I'm like, for six bucks, whatever. We'll take the gamble. So I'll take you along and show you and let you know if it turns out to be a win or not. I'm pretty excited to see how um, it turns out because I was looking at other areas, like other auctions in our areas, in our areas, other auctions in our area. And um, they had some really awesome stuff. Like I should not have to pay full price for any of the sinks in our house. <laughs> they had a, um, it was a stainless steel kitchen or a stainless steel sink. Your water. Laura, can you get her water? They had a stainless steel uh, sink. It was a smaller one, so it'd be perfect for the mudroom. And um, it, I looked it up to see how much it normally goes for, and it's like a $400 sink. Like, what? A little stainless steel. I don't remember the measurements, but it was not big. Um, sink. So, I don't know if I'll bid on that or not. But, anyways, I should not pay full price for a sink but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. Who knows what I'll find on there. Okay, so it is the next day and it is raining, so we're not doing anything on the basement. Um, but I realized as I was doing some stuff that I forgot to show you guys the stuff that I ended up picking up from the auction place and I told you I would let you know what I thought. This is the six dollar coffee maker and it works. So I like it a lot more than my French, French press just because it's keeping my coffee hot. Um, I actually was cleaning it last night before I used it and when I woke up this morning the water in here was still hot so I mean I like that. So that's the coffee maker. It was six dollars. It's normally a hundred on Amazon. So I it was a win. Here's the kitchen faucet. So it's brand new. Like, I don't, I mean, it's new. Still has all of the instructions and everything in it. There's the weight. Um, here's the head. So, anyways, I got this. It's a $200 faucet normally, and I got it for $30. And it's, so, I think I will definitely be using that again because that was really fun it was really easy to pick the stuff up and um i don't know it could be very addicting so i'm keeping an eye on a couple other things i have it on my watch list and i'll let you guys i'll keep you guys updated